There were three major factors in the probable cause affidavit that led to Brian Koberger's arrest. Number one, DNA taken from the sheath of the weapon at the murder scene. Number two, video footage of Brian's car not only in the neighborhood where the murders took place, but also back in Pullman, Washington, where his residence is. And number three, Brian's cell phone pings around Pullman and also in the King Road area where the students live, and the information of the cell phone lines up with his vehicle. Initially, authorities described the vehicle as being a white 2011 to 2013 Hyundai Elantra, but later on an FBI expert reviews the footage and deems it to be between 2014 and 2016. Ryan Kohlberger drives a white 2015 Hyundai Elantra. And there were a few odd behaviors after the murders regarding his vehicle, like cleaning out his car with gloves and then putting the trash in the neighbor's trash can. But I'm going to do another video that specifically addresses his treks with his vehicle after the murders. But in today's video, we're going to talk about two aspects of the smoking gun, Brian's vehicle and his cell phone leading up to the night of the murders. Plus, I'm going to show you a picture of Zana with her friend and something that was in the reflection that's very interesting. You can weigh in. As for the DNA, I'll cover that in a future video. So now, let's get into it. According to documents, Brian stalked the students for months before the actual murders, at least 12 different occasions since June of 2022. The picture of Zana that I'm going to talk about that could include this stalking will be addressed shortly, but let me get through these few points first. Brian circled the area for an hour before the murders took place, with footage of the vehicle going back and forth in the area until the fourth time where he actually entered the house. We also have heard in this document that he went back to the scene of the crime hours later. That's according to digital evidence along with a little road trip or two. Now we know Brian was going to school for criminology and he was actually taking his PhD at Washington State University for his first semester in fall of 2022. And even after the murders, Brian still went to class, he finished up the semester, and was said to have a different demeanor after the killings. Previously, he was going to school at DeSales University in Pennsylvania, where he studied under a renowned professor, Catherine Ramsland, who wrote about the BTK killer. She actually had over 70 books also, and Brian would have studied serial killers etc. under her. My question in this, because I start to wonder why did he move schools? Why did he choose Washington? What made him move to Washington? Was it the program or was it something else? Let me know your thoughts below. Now in May of 2022, I've mentioned this before, there was a Reddit survey under the XCons subreddit and asked eight questions. At the time, Brian was in school and because he studied criminology, this really wouldn't be odd behavior, but obviously looking back, it causes a, a few questions. There was a couple now that really truly stand out to me. What I really would love to know the answer to was, did you prepare for a crime before leaving home? After arriving, what steps did you take prior to locating the victim or target, i.e. person or object? Before leaving, is there anything else you did and how did you leave the scene? Now, a month later in June, 2022, Brian gets a new phone number. And according to the docs, it says these records indicated that the 8458 phone is subscribed to Brian Koberger at an address in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania, and the account has been open since June 23rd, 2022. That was two months before he started school in Washington State University and five months before the actual murders. Now let's talk about the stalking. In the document states that his phone was in the area of King Road at least 12 occasions prior to November 13th, 2022, which is the date of the murders, and since June of 2022. And all of these occasions, except for one, occurred in the late evening and early morning hours of their respective days. Now it doesn't list the specific dates, but I have many questions about this. And also I'm bringing up this picture about Zana. She's with her friend in it, and it's in front of Sigma Chi, which is just a hop skip away from the King Road residence. Now you can see here underneath the sign, I matched it with the building, which is very close to where she lives, as I mentioned. If I zoom in on the picture just to the left, you can see what looks like a white car. And if we match it to a 2015 Hyundai Elantra, it gets even more interesting, doesn't it? Now, I don't know when this picture was actually taken, but if you do know this answer, 
please put that in the comments below or you can email me at it's a crime and a shame at gmail.com with proof and we can figure this out because I'm wondering if all the 11 occasions was at nighttime and perhaps the afternoon was something like this picture. It's possible. Now the authorities do have this picture, but I'm just wanting to have a little discussion about it. Now, at some point before August 21st, 2022, Brian moves from Pennsylvania to Washington to go to school. According to reports, Brian and his dad had made plans to travel together from Washington to Pennsylvania after the semester was over. It was said that it was made months before. Now, August 21st, 2022, this is where Brian gets pulled over for a traffic stop for failure to wear his seatbelt. But it was in Moscow, Idaho at 11.37 p.m. And Brian was stopped at Farm Road and Pullman Highway. Shortly before, at 10.34 p.m. to 11.35, so for an hour, his phone pinged in the area of the King Road residence. Two minutes later, he was pulled over. Now, at that time, Brian provided his phone number ending in 8458, which would be important in the future for the November killings and also with his pings. At that time, Brian provided a phone number ending in 8458, which would be very important in the months to follow after the murders and his cell phone pings. He was driving a 2015 white Hyundai Elantra with Pennsylvania plates. Now, in Pennsylvania, you do not have a front plate, which makes his very common white Hyundai Elantra, not so common. He did change his plates to Washington after the murders. Now, August 22nd, the very next day, it's first day of class. Now you can see why I'm questioning why he went to Washington and that August 21st, he's already in the King Road residence. Coincidence or not? Let me know below. On October 14th, 2022, Ryan gets stopped again by Washington State University Police. He's also at this time driving the 2015 Hyundai Elantra. And this is Brian's little behavior, it seems. He gets pulled over in August. He gets pulled over in October. He gets pulled over on the way to going to Pennsylvania. It's interesting because Brian studies criminology. He studies law. He studies, you know, the right thing to do. Yet, even though these are minor traffic stops, he's still breaking the rules. Here's something that was really interesting in the document. In fall of 2022, Brian applied for an internship with the Pullman Police Department. He wrote an essay and in it, he said he had an interest in assisting rural law enforcement agencies with how to better collect and analyze technological data in public safety operations. Now, this is much like his survey back in May of 2022 of Reddit, where he said he wanted participants to understand how emotions and psychological traits influence decision making when committing a crime. I want to know, I'm sure you'd like to know too, was this part of his master plan? Was this a devious way of learning more about criminal behavior and what he would need to know? Or, because everyone's innocent until proven guilty, was this just a nothing burger? So, was this all part of his master plan. This survey was step one. This is how I learned from ex-cons. And number two, now I learned from the police department. Now let's fast forward to the night of the murders. November 13th, 2022 at 2.42 a.m. Brian's phone pinged in the area of his apartment. Pretty normal. It says Brian's phone was on and using cellular resources that provide coverage to 1639 Northeast Valley Road, apartment G201, Pullman, Washington, where he lives. At 2.44 a.m., two minutes later, his white Hyundai Elantra travels north. It was observed by Washington State University surveillance cameras traveling north on Southeast Nevada Street at Northeast Stadium Way. At 2.47 a.m., three minutes later, Brian's phone pinged and was consistent with the vehicle leaving the residence. At this point, it says in the document, it stopped reporting to the network. 
It says which is consistent with either the phone being in an area without cellular coverage, the connection to the network is disabled, such as putting the phone in airplane mode or the phone is turned off. Six minutes later at 2.53 a.m., the Elantra travels toward SR270. It says it's observed traveling southeast on Nevada Street in Pullman, Washington towards SR270. SR270 connects Pullman, Washington to Moscow, Idaho. At 3 a.m., Brian's phone is off. It says it wasn't using cell te phone towers near the King Road. But in the document, it states, based on my training, experience, and conversations with law enforcement officers that specialize in the utilization of cellular telephone records as part of investigations, individuals can either leave their cellular telephone at a different location before committing a crime or turn their cellular telephone off prior to going to a location to commit a crime. This is done by subjects in an effort to avoid alerting law enforcement that a cellular device associated with them was in a particular area where a crime is committed. I also know that on numerous occasions, subjects will surveil an area where they intend to commit a crime prior to the date of the crime. Depending on the circumstances, this could be done a few days before or for several months prior to the commission of a crime. During these types of surveillance, it is possible that an individual would not leave their cellular telephone at a separate location location or turn it off since they do not plan to commit the offense on that particular day. At 3.26 a.m., the suspect vehicle is observed traveling westbound in Moscow in the 700 block of Indian Hills Drive in Moscow. 3.28 a.m., two minutes later, it's traveling westbound on Steiner Avenue at Idaho State Highway 95. At 3.29 a.m., suspect vehicle passes three times by 1122 King Road. The suspect vehicle makes an initial three passes by the 1122 King Road residence, then leaves via Walenta Drive. In the document it states, based off my experience as a patrol officer, this is a residential neighborhood with a very limited number of vehicles that travel in the area during the early morning hours. Upon review of the video, there are only a few cars that enter and exit this area during this time frame. At 3.45 a.m., that's where we heard reports at the gas station, there was footage of a vehicle driving by very fast. It says by an unidentified clerk at the gas station, I had a weird feeling to go get on cameras. The vehicle drove by the gas station real quick, turning down a side street off Highway 8. If we look at the map, it does match to Steiner Avenue turning off. If that's in fact where it went, we didn't see that full surveillance, obviously, from the gas station, but it does connect or could connect. 15 minutes after that, at 4 a.m., Zana gets an order from DoorDash. At 4.04, .04, the suspect vehicle, it's said to be seen a fourth time entering the area. It's seen driving eastbound on King Road, stopping and turning around in front of 500 Queen Road number 52, and then driving back westbound on King Road. It says when the suspect vehicle one is in front of the King Road residence, it appeared to unsuccessfully attempt to park or turn around in the road. The vehicle then continued to the intersection of Queen Road and King Road, where it can be seen completing a three-point turn and then driving eastbound again down Queen Road. Now, one interesting aspect that I thought of or that came to mind is it's interesting in the document how it's called suspect vehicle number one, as if there might be a number two down the road or maybe they left it open. Usually, in my experience in the last three years, I haven't really seen it being numbered number one unless there was a number two vehicle. Usually it was just suspect vehicle or the actual vehicle. What are your thoughts? Let me know below. Also, there's one more thing that I'm looking into in the timeline, which could be or could not be interesting, depends on what uh, is confirmed. So stay tuned for that. Now, 4.20 a.m., that's when the suspect vehicle departs the King Road area. We know that the murders, according to the authorities, happened between between 4 a.m. and 4.25 a.m. I did a video regarding inside the house and you can see that in the description box below or at the end of this video. And it says at 4.20, that's when the suspect vehicle departs. It says the suspect seen departing the King Road residence at a high rate of speed. It's next observed traveling southbound on Walenta Drive. It's believed the vehicle likely exited the neighborhood at Palouse River Drive and Conestoga Drive, or Conestoga, however you pronounce that. Palouse River is at the southern edge of Moscow and proceeds into Whitman County, Washington. Eventually, the road leads to Pullman, Washington, which is 10 miles to Moscow. Now, it's interesting because he does take numerous routes. He takes the long way, or the milk run, as we say, to get home. Interesting. 
At 4.48 a.m., Brian's phone turns back on, and that's after he did his little loop-de-loo. His phone doesn't go back on until 4.48 a.m. It says in the document at which time it utilized cellular resources that provide coverage to Idaho State Highway 95 south of Moscow, Idaho, near Blaine, Idaho, north of Genesee. Between 4.50 and 5.26 a.m., the phone utilizes cellular resources south on Idaho State Highway 95 to Genesee, Idaho, then traveling west towards Uniontown, Idaho, and then north back into Pullman, Washington. There's that loop. 5.30 a.m., the phone is back in Pullman, Washington. It says the phone utilizes resources that provide coverage to Pullman and consistent with the phone traveling back to the Coburger residence. The lack of the 8458 phone reporting to AT&T between 2.47 and 4.48 a.m. is consistent with Koberger attempting to conceal his location during the quadruple homicide that occurred at the King Road residence. He goes on a couple of treks after that, one being back to the scene of the crime, and then he goes on a little jaunt. But the questions I have now are, how long was Brian planning these murders, if he was planning them, and specifically, why these students? Was that Brian's car in the reflection of Zana's picture? And when was that taken and what time? Also, what are the dates of the alleged stalkings, including the 11 at night and the one during the day? It'd be interesting to know if it was spread out in quite the distance or if it was really a short period of time. This would be great to know, obviously, to see how long it had been planned for. And this is something that's a stumper. Why would a criminology student with years of education even turn on his phone or take his phone with him and then turn it off as he's driving? Why not leave it at home? So it makes me wonder, what's his plan? Is it a case of taunting or does he have a master plan? Let me know below what you think. And if it was months of pre-planning, then why overlook this phone? Was it deliberate? Why? This this is very odd to me. If it was pre-planned, it would have been for a, um, you know, a length of time, which means he would have thought this through. So I'm wondering what's going on here. I also wonder about the sheath. I talked about that in my last video. Why leave that there? Was it because he was in a fit of rage and he absolutely forgot it or was it there for a reason plus if it was months before he would have time to scope out a path and you know potential cameras which could be why he did the little loop-de-loop -loop, except he got caught allegedly and in my opinion and the biggest question I have is why November 13th why that day was it just the perfect storm for him or was there a bigger reason Leave a comment below, like, and subscribe. I'll be doing the getaway next and show you some interesting aspects as well. Click here to see my playlist on the Idaho murders, always more coming, and also here for my last video in the case. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you soon.